We've got a question from Jeanette Burton uh, from uh, KN Drinks Logistics. I think this is a, 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 one of those really big questions. Given the geographical spread and number of employees, how does an organization like Starbucks ensure all its employees are authentic and aligned with its brand, ethos, and culture? In other words, can something get big and stay small? I, I think uh, I, I have crafted that question inside Starbucks many, many times that uh, we have to use our scale for good and we have to crack the code as a company in recognizing that we can get big and stay small. The first thing I think is you gotta ask yourself, what does that mean? And to me it means that we shouldn't define the company by its size. So when we were hitting the wall and making mistakes, we were managing the company at a very lofty place and talking about thousands of stores and millions of customers. When a Starbucks customer comes into a Starbucks store, they see one store, one Starbucks partner, and hopefully an extraordinary cup of coffee. They're not worried about thousands of people. Uh, the challenge is how do you create intimacy and trust with your people and your customers when you get this big? And um, because most things in America that have gotten big have not stayed true or not stayed authentic, the burden of proof is on Starbucks greater than it would be because there is a, uh, a level of um, uh, activity that happened before us in which most things that got big went bad. Uh, and I think there's no formula for this other than the work. And the work is that we have to decentralize our company. And what I mean by that is we have to create local relevancy for the customer, and we've got to create local relevancy for the Starbucks partner in their store, or in their district, or wherever they're working. And that local relevancy is, again, based on the humanity of the company. Um, if, if we get a group of people together and we talk about the stock price, or how big we are, or how big we're going to get, um, it's not going to be long before that becomes the reason for being. And I think great companies have a larger purpose than becoming bigger or making more money. And I think people today have lots of choices, talented people, where are they going to work? And people leave companies because they're not inspired or not proud of the enterprise, the management, or they don't trust the intentions of the company. And I think it's in the work. And I think you've got to ask yourself every single day, are we doing the right thing to establish the connective tissue that gets people to understand what we stand for and why we're doing this? And uh, you know, whether it's the, the Prince's Trust here in London or what we do in Rwanda, it's, it's connecting people to realizing that, and I, I know this sounds a little maybe lofty, but to try and create a company in which people can recognize that they're part of something larger than themselves. Now, once you commit yourself to that kind of spirit and goal, you are held to a standard in which you cannot fracture that level of trust and confidence and authenticity. And I think when I came back um, and I stood in front of the entire company and I apologized for, in a sense, letting them and their families down. And when we brought all our people together in New Orleans, we had 10,000 store managers, there was a lot of emotion about the care that we have for the company and the concern we had. And two things happened that I think were, are worth sharing with you. The first is the subject of leadership and I think the subject of being a male leader is that um, Somewhere along the way, I think we are taught and imprinted as men that we have to be always strong and aggressive and macho and, and very rarely should we stand in front of people and show emotion or, God forbid, don't ever cry. And, and I think there's such cynicism in the workplace today 
as a whole. Because most people have come to your company working for a company in which they have not had a good experience. And there's such cynicism and lack of trust in what business is about. So the leader has to demonstrate authenticity, transparency. And I think for me, I want to be real. I, I, I don't think anyone can prescribe for you how to be as a leader. You have to be who you are. And I think when I stood up in front of 10,000 people in New Orleans, and we brought all our people together at the height of the cataclysmic financial crisis, I remember I wrote a short outline uh, for, the, for the speech, and I showed it to a few of my colleagues, and they were gravely concerned that I was going to share such bad information about the trajectory of the company and the position that I was going to scare the crap out of people, and people were going to be so concerned. And I felt so strongly that there had to be a level of trust that people needed to have the same information that I had. And in order to have everyone aligned, facing in the same direction, committed to the same purpose and goal, everyone needed to understand. And I think this is the work. And I, I, I do believe so strongly that this is not in the textbooks of business schools. Or this is, I think, trying to be real and authentic. And, and just think about your own life and your own relationships. Your best relationships are those relationships in which you're having honest direct conversation. And I think people who are working for you as a, as a, in the company and you are managing deserve the same level of information, insight, integrity, and respect.